الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين uh, We're approaching or we'll making our final approach now to Masjid قباء The first masjid established by the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم um, الله سبحانه وتعالى he said لمسجد أسس على التقوى من أول يوم أحق أن تقوم فيه A mosque that was established upon taqwa from the first day, meaning from the first day that the Rasul arrived in Medina or its outskirts, it is most worthy that you uh, establish prayer in. Within it are men who love to uh, purify themselves, intensely purify themselves. Wallahu yuhibbul muttahirin and indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who purify themselves. And of course, the purification, there is a zahiri purification and outward purification. And that is uh, what concerns the body. And there is a batuni, an inward purification, and that is what concerns the heart and the mind and, and the nafs. Uh, and of course, the emphatic, uh, the emphasis on, on tahara in the verse uh, indicates that there is a purification of the outward and the inward. And the outward is limited and the inward is, uh, is quite vast. And so there is very little work that needs to go on to purifying the outward, but there is much work that needs to go in to purifying the inward. And so in following the steps of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, not just the physical steps, but following the steps of purification of the inward after his guidance and his, his sunnah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one is able to attain that love of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Uh, as he said, Wallahu yuhibbu al-muttahireen. Allah loves those who are most purified. So may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala purify us outwardly and inwardly most importantly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify our hearts from hypocrisy and our actions from riyah, ostentation and our tongues from lying and from treason and treachery. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, purify our eyes and purify our ears and purify our mouths, purify uh, our outward and inward and purify our hearts in order for us to meet him while he is pleased with us and that we meet him with sound hearts. On a day when no wealth or children will avail a person except he who meets Allah with a sound heart. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us sound hearts. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. The brothers here and the sisters are currently performing a sunnah on a Saturday morning and walking to Masjid al Quba. This was the sunnah of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it's actually a really incredible sunnah because as you can see, we have everyone walking in twos. Um, again, one of the sunnahs of the Prophet. And also we're going to Masjid al Quba and uh, the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam kept a nisbah with Masjid al Quba, the first mosque as they were coming to Medina that was created but also to encourage and incentivize people to carry on this, with this sunnah. We go to the masjid, you perform two nuafin and you get the reward of an entire umrah. So, and we've just come back from Mecca and we know how arduous that journey was. And to be able to be here um, and do a simple walk that gives us such a um, reward is, uh, mashallah, really incredible. And uh, it's been incredible traveling with almost a couple of hundred people, having this structured um, method and the structured way in which the entire program has been run um, uh, has been an experience in itself and actually whilst it might seem simple just looking at the way that all these people are in the prophetic walk are you walking in twos or walking in fours just demonstrates that we can live the sunnah even now in the 21st century so from brother Jalal so uh, Jalal is this your my first trip to Umrah? Uh, yeah alhamdulillah how are you finding it so far? No, it's, uh, it's a very beautiful experience, mashallah. A very beautiful experience. Okay. And mashallah, from the trip, I mean, what's been your highlight or highlights? Um, do you know what? Medina Sharifa, very, very peaceful. Yes. Um, 
I didn't I didn't expect it to be that peaceful. I thought it actually be more um, quite busy. Yes. Makashri was was really busy. <laughs> I didn't expect it to be that busy as well. Um, but in terms of Medina Street, it was totally different, totally different atmosphere. And what about um, travelling with the group that you're travelling and with the... Um, how have you found that? I mean, it's been challenging at times, yeah. but um, I think that was kind of expected. We were informed for that there were going to be tests uh, brought upon all of us. Yeah. Um, especially going in groups. Okay. Sure. Um, so that was something which, I mean, you, you can't anticipate every single challenge, but right. um, it's been a humble. It's been very good. We've bonded yeah. really well with everyone. Yeah. We've had uh, Nasheeds in the coach, <laughs> nice Zikrs time. in the coach. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I've met a lot of new brothers. Yeah. So it's been it's been really good. And uh, uh, with with Nasheeds and Zikrs, I mean, have you been? prescribed any miles to do here or any, anything in particular to how to spend your days? Yeah, yeah, I've been uh, prescribed with uh, morning amals, um, amals to uh, pray after Zohar namaz, uh, amals to pray in the evening, um, what amals to pray when, when, when you first visit uh, Master the Nabwi, what amals to pray when, when you first uh, visit Makkah Sharif. So Alhamdulillah, it's been uh, in, in terms of what our miles to is, yeah. it, it's been really good. Uh, how, how does that impact on your day and the routine that you have here? Oh, my, my, alhamdulillah, my, my routine has solely been focused on trying to do as much amals and uh, as much zikrs as I, as I possibly can, do as much ibadah as I possibly can. Okay, mashallah. And uh, finally, Brother Jaleed, I mean, if there was something that you could say as your key kind of highlight and for um, others that are in the UK and elsewhere, what would you say? highlight I would say bonding with the brothers yeah I'd say that's probably probably the key thing okay mashallah this is the son of our teacher just to mention so obviously as you know we've been coming from the blessed mosque of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we're walking towards Mosque al Quba and uh, as we know or as it's mentioned and it's the nisbah that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has kept in Mosque al Quba by mentioning that whoever walks on a Saturday morning from the Mosque of the Prophet to Masjid al-Qubba and performs two rak'ah nafal you get the reward of an Umrah okay now if you think about that we've had the blessing of doing Umrah in Makkah and we all know how hard that was and how arduous that was and here we've got the blessing and the opportunity just by having a simple walk we get that reward so that's point one the second thing to know is that behind me we have Masjid al Jummah. Now this is the first masjid that the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam performed the Jummah Salah. So what they were doing, they were walking from Masjid Al-Qubba, they spent a few days there and as they were coming to this particular area, there was a village here and they met the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they mentioned to him that you, you Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have stayed in Quba and the people there have had the benefit from you. What do we get? We have nothing. And the Prophet of Allah, in his compassion, as is his sunnah, he said he then uh, delivered the Jummah khutbah and the first ever Jummah was delivered here in Medina. And now, inshallah, we're going to carry on towards Masjid Quba. Two things to note, inshallah. As we travel past the bridge, on the right-hand side, slightly further on, is one of the most special gardens where the Prophet Wasallam rested with Sayyidina Abu Bakr and another companion. Now, um, we're not going to get a chance to go there ourselves, inshallah. Brothers and sisters are welcome to make their own way uh, at another um, chance that they get. But the garden is still pretty much preserved. It has the date palms. They've marked where the Prophet sallam, sat, where Sayyidina Abu Bakr sat, and where the other companions sat as well. Um, uh, so something to definitely note. And then, inshallah, after we go past the gardens, we're going to make our way to Masjid al Quba. Any questions? Okay. Now a slight admin point, inshallah, when you get to Masjid al Quba, inshallah, the sisters will go obviously in the sisters' direction, brothers will go to the brothers' direction. Please connect with your mahrams because from that point, when you get to Masjid al Quba, then you're effectively, inshallah, free to do, um, uh, spend some time there, um, do your two nuafi raka, and then make your way back as, as ever you and your mahram decide. Now you can get a taxi back for those that are tired, or for those who want, you can inshallah walk back. Yeah.
How do you make it back for breakfast? Brother Muhammad is asking, how do you make it break back for breakfast? If you want to make it back for breakfast, inshallah, then maybe your two rakah will be done slightly quickly and you probably do want to get the Uber back, inshallah. Okay. Any other questions? Um, uh, yes? Uh, are we going to go into the garden? No, we're not going to go into the garden. Okay, inshallah. Okay, inshallah, we're going to make our